sometimes you're given a table about really anything and from that table you might see a pattern that you can graph so let's say we have Mr. Cat who does jumping jacks and on day one he does six jump, jumping jacks and on day two he does twelve and on day th three he has a total of eighteen and day four is a total of twenty four and day five is a total of thirty so each day <coughs> you, to you want to figure out well here's the total number of jumps I have so on day four, when day four is ended, Mr. Cat has done 24 jumping jacks. In day five, he's done 30, day three, 18. So look for something common here, a pattern. And you see that it's going up by six each time. So this means how many, that he's doing six jumping jacks every day. Six jumps per day. And that's our important pattern that we're going to hold on to. Now, to think about this, we try to think about our variables. We have total jumps, j, which equals, well, it depends on how many days have passed, doesn't it? There's six jumps each day, so if I want to know how many jumps that this cat has done on the third day, I do 3 times 6, and I get 18, for example. And look at all the numbers, this always works. For any day that you're at, take the day and multiply it by 6. So an equation is the jumps that he's done equals 6 times the number of days that have passed. Now typically though, since j is dependent, right, the jumps depend on how many days have passed, we make our dependent variable y. And since the number of days that have passed are independent, right? It could be anything. That's our x. So we have this equation. And we can graph that equation. So how would this look? Well, here's our x. This is the number of days. Typically, independent variables are put on the x-axis. On the y is our independent, and that's the jumps. So notice that I really don't have enough room for 24 jumps. So I'm going to go up by sixes because I know that'll fit. So this part of the graph is called the origin. That's where zero is. So let's plot the number of days, jumps here. So this is six, 12, 18, 24, and 30. And the number of days, I can go by ones here, one, two, three, four, and five. So on day one, the cat jumped <coughs> six times. So that's a plot right here. And you can think of it like this. Day one, six jumps. Day two, remember there are 12 jumps. So I can plot that two and 12. Day three, 18 jumps. Because we're thinking about our x and y points. Where are they on the graph? x is the days and y is the number of jumps. So 3 and 18 right here and then 4 and 24 and 5 and 30. You can plot those two. And it makes sense that we're getting a line because the cat is jumping a constant rate of jumps. Like each day that passes the cat is jumping an equal amount of times. It's not like he's jumping five jumps one day and ten the next. So once we have the points, we want to connect them with a line. Like so. And I want to actually fix this line a little bit. The average should point in both directions because it's going to go on forever both ways. Now even though the cat didn't jump at zero or if we kept extending this, negative one days or negative two, we're plotting a line. And that helps us understand what could happen at any point in time. So let's write our equation on here. Y, the jumps, equals the number of days times 6. Or, as you wrote before, Y equals 6D. So sometimes, instead of a table, you're given the equation at first. So you might be given Y equals 6D. 
and in fact often you're also given a plus or minus some value so let's assume that before the cat even started excuse me let's assume that before the cat even started making these jumps he had done 10 jumps maybe in his life so this is the jumps before the cat starts working out he had jumped uh, maybe 10 times last week just for fun so we're going to plot out the total number of jumps and that includes the 10 that he's done already so this is going to change our graph a little bit and now that we're given an equation let's work this way by using the equation to plot the points so set up our y and our x and now our, our strategy is a little bit different and we might find it easier you want to plug in several values for x or the days excuse me and in fact let's change this d to an x because we don't want to confuse the two but remember that the, the days are representing the x values okay so we have 6x x to the x plus 10 let's try a couple values of x it's pretty good to, to use a negative value a zero value and a couple positive values so this is our x our equation is 6x plus 10 and we want to know okay for each of these values what would the number of jumps be y so plug these numbers in how do I plug this in it would be 6 times x plus 10 each time well, x is negative 1, so 6 times negative 1 is negative 6 plus 10. That is positive 4. So it's negative 6 plus 10, and that's positive 4. Here we're plugging 0 in. 6 times 0 is 0 plus 10, which is 10. And then day 1, it would be 6 times 1 plus 10, which is 16. And then for day 2, we 2 times 6, or 6 times 2, plus 10, which is 22. So notice that we're still going up by 6's, but we're starting at a higher value. Let's plot these points. These are our x values, and these are our y. Our first point is negative 1, 4. Well, here's 0. x comes first, so negative 1, and then positive 4. This time, let's count up by 2's. 2, 4, write these in, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Oh, my scale was too short. That's okay. Remember that happens. Just erase. <clears throat> Start over. And choose a different scale. Let's try 4s. So 4, 8, oops, fix that. When you're putting these lines on it's really got to be accurate because otherwise the graph would become very sloppy very fast. Let's go by 4s. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. Okay. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. I'm going to stop there because I only went up to 22. And here's 0. Now our first point is negative 1, 4. So negative 1, 4 is right here. Then we have 0, 10. And this makes sense. It's about halfway between here. Now let me change the color so we can see it. There's negative 1, 4, 0, 10. That means that at day 0, the cat had already done 10 jumps. So before the cat really even started the workout regimen, it already had 10 jumps. On day 1, then, the total number of jumps, if we do 6 jumps each day, is going to be 16. That's right here, remember, day 1, 16. Day 2 will bring us up to 22 jumps. And again, our strategy is the same. Once we have these points, you want to connect them with a line. Just pick two points, line it up, and you get a nice line. And then you want to extend the line in both directions by putting arrows on both sides. And notice the only difference is that this line, instead of starting down here at 0 and going up, it's up here. And that's because on day zero, there were 10 jumps already. So if you're given an equation like this, and I say you want to represent it on a graph, well, then you could say, let's plug in a couple of values of x and see what happens to the y value. And then you can look for patterns. 
notice that the number next to the x variable is the rate um, of change. It's the rate each day. And the 10 represents the number that you're starting with, really, especially when you plug in 0. 0 is like a starting point. So when you plug 0 in here, it cancels all this out, and you're only left with this number. So by plugging 0 in, you're left with this number, and that's the starting point. So this number, if you have it, if it's something times x plus or minus something, this number will tell you where the first point should be. And it's right here, 0, 10, and there's that 10.